God is good. God is good. God is good. We're going to read here, and I'm just trying to come up here, but we praise God. If you can just fill the house, fill the room with praise. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Oh my God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we're going to the Word of God, uh, we're going to Acts the 16th chapter. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word, Lord, we ask you, God, you have full manifestation and demonstration through the word of God in these few moments, in these few minute, minutes. And God, Lord, we ask you, let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy say, oh, Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. God, we thank you for this door of utterance as we walk through. Hide me, speak to us, speak to our hearts, speak to our hearts, Lord. So we won't go straight. Speak to our hearts, Lord, that we'll hear a word from you. So we'll know what to do. Yes, Speak to our hearts, Lord. God, Lord, we thank you right now as we prepare to deliver a word to your people, yes. a word of instruction, yes. a word of encouragement, a word of, that lifts, a word that encourages. Yes. God, we thank you yes. and we praise you right now in advance of your goodness and your mercy. And God, we pray, Lord, Lord, let the words fall on good ground, that it may be restored, that may the ground be cultivated, that it bring back a harvest, that it be pleasing to you, O God, that it be pleasing to you, God, we yes, thank you yes. and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, praise God. We're going to... Acts, the 16th chapter, the 16th verse. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 16 and 16 says, Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This king, I'm um, sorry, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Uh -huh. And this did for many days. Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very Hour. Yes, sir. But when our master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. They brought them to the magistrates and said, These men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city, that they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates turned, tore off their clothes, and commanded them be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. Going to the 17th chapter, and we're speeding along. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of Jews. Then Peter, I'm sorry, then Paul, as his custom, as his custom was, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures. Explaining and demonstrating that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. 
and some of them were persuaded. And a great multitude of devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women, joined Paul and Silas. But the Jews, who were not persuaded, became envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace, and gathering a mob, set all in uh, the, set all the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jesus, and sought to bring them out to the people. Key verse, but when they did not find them, they dragged Jesus and some of uh, some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here to. Let me read a little bit further. Jason harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, There is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And so when they had taken security from Jesus and the rest, they let them go. Praise be unto God for the reading of his word. I don't want to bore you. I don't want to prolong this uh, because God has spoken. And he, yeah, we just want to give you some instruction just for a few moments that will be an encouragement to you. Uh, but we want to say, uh, use for a subject today, Effect change. If you will uh, speak with me and speak to your neighbor and tell them effect change. Come on, somebody. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, come on and say it with power. Say effect change. Amen. As we look at the Word of God and as we look at the 16th chapter, we see that uh, the disciples are going on and they're doing about what God has commanded them and. Uh, all of a sudden, there is a a a a a, a, a girl uh, uh, that is possessed with a spirit of divination, um, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling and understanding. Because the uh, aggravation that followed the disciples, and they got aggravated spiritually, righteously aggravated and responded to what was going on. Oh, yeah. And understand there is a difference between reacting and responding. And sometimes we can look at life and we can react, but when we react, your reaction is based on the action. Right. And if we respond, your respond is from a place of sobriety, a place of thinking it through and not just based on the act that happened. And what we have is a lot of people react to things instead of responding. Right. Some of the two we have in the climate of our nature, nation and our cities and our regions that many people are reacting, but they're not responding. Right. And one thing when you respond, you prepare, you become proactive so things that have already been happening won't happen again. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you become preventive instead of instigative. Mm. Uh, you have to understand that you can get around folk and they can instigate trouble. Uh, they can instigate chaos and confusion. They know how to alter the confusion and step back and watch it all play out. Right. Mm -hmm. You got instigators that will hype you up for the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, they will hype you up for the moment, but then back out themselves, and you cannot see them or see their hands when they have been busy. And that's why you have to be careful. And sometimes it's best when you're in the midst of a situation to pack up and watch before you react so you can respond. Because if you react, you will be reacting off of what they already have prescribed for you and subscribed for you to do. So you must be careful that you don't react, but you respond. That's why even if you got haters, I know that's a word that people use a lot now. They're drinking a bunch of haterade. Even the ones that say they got haterades. Haters, they are drinking a lot of haterades because that's all they preach and talk about is haters, haters, haters. If you got that many haters, who is on your side? But let me get back to the text. Let me get back to the story. Understand you're going to have haters, but you understand you cannot react to haters. Yeah. 
we ought to respond to haters. We can react on the, what they have set up in the mirage that have, they have made you look like and look into because you only have seen it from a one perspective. But when you back out and look at a thing, you can see it from a different perspective. Oftentimes we don't see what, what's going on because we're in the situation. But when the same situation happens to us and, or someone else and we're looking at someone else, we can tell them how they respond. But when it's your turn, you're just reacting. You have to understand that reaction is not going to help you all the time. But responding causes you to pull back, observe, and make a wise so decision. Good. Good for you. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So as this woman who is full of a spirit that is not of God, she's saying true things, but with the wrong agenda. All right. She's saying the right stuff, but with the wrong mindset. All right. And that's why you got to be careful. People can dance, they can praise, but what is their intent? Right. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Some of y'all act like y'all haven't been sitting here watching the whole service. Understand that there are come distractions even in the midst because there's demonic influences. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Demonic influences to the fact that you don't understand why a person is acting weird. Here, strange and out of the ordinary, it will seem as their praise is pure. Uh, but God doesn't come to bring any division, but to bring us together. And if distractions can come, you gotta know how to respond and to react. Uh, because when you react, uh, you only feed into what they've been feeding you. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. You're only feeding into the trauma that they already have in their lives. Uh, uh, it's a shame that some folk that talk about I can't do drama or the drama kings and the drama queens. Uh, they talk about I can't have this in my life, but every time you turn around, they got this in their life. Yeah. Yeah. So, you got to learn how to respond and not react. Paul said, look, I'm not going to react to this agitation or irritation that has come. Because sometimes we fuel the enemy's objective. Sometimes we fool, feel uh, uh, the enemy's plans and plots by giving them what they want. Some people do things so they can get a reaction. Yeah. I preach to myself. Some people do things just to see you get upset, to see you come out of character, to see you get mad with them, man. They just wanna, they know what buttons to push. The devil gave them the buttons to push because he's been watching you all of your life. So the enemy knows what gets on your nerves. So he will present that thing so you can react to that thing and not respond. Only fueling the fire instead of putting the fire out. Oh yeah. So what Paul does, he said, I'm not going to react, but I'm going to respond. Yes, sir. I'm going to respond because uh, this thing has become not an authentic praise. It has to become uh, a somewhat a, 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 a mockery of God, a mockery of God's word, a mockery of what we call Christians, a mockery of what we call worshipers, a mockery of what we call praisers. Don't you understand? The enemy wants you to react so he can point his finger at you just to say, I knew you never was a Christian. I knew you never was saved. I knew you never was all into God like that. You say this and you say you love God, but I don't see no actions. But understand, you can't react to the enemy because that's the place he wants to pull you to. You ever got into a conversation that got heated and, and the person became combative? And like, come on, come on. That's what the enemy does. He eats 
you on, if I can use that term. He itched you on to get you a rise in your flesh so you can react and not respond. So Paul was greatly annoyed. And for you sanctified folk that are so deep and saved, there's nothing wrong with being agitated and annoyed. But why you walk, I'm annoyed. It's natural. Lord, they're going to help me here. God gave us these emotions, and when we don't please our Father, it angers Him, it upsets Him. Yeah. So why don't you expect parents to be upset? Why don't you expect children to be upset? Why don't you expect your co-workers to be upset? Your supervisors and managers. Yes, Lord. But understand, Paul, thank you so much. Paul was in a place that he could not react. Because there was too much on him to lose for just a reaction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of us are getting caught up into reacting instead of getting caught up into responding because the reaction is going to keep you confined by the parameters that the action was built on. The plot and the plan was built on. And the enemy wants to rule you in. Right. Right. So he'll give you bait. See, there's something in marketing that we call bait and switch. Yes. It's the idea that you'll be advertising one thing, but you sell me something else. Uh -huh. And you got to be careful because the enemy knows how to bait and switch us. Yes. He knows how to present a thing and get it so that it looks like you want it. <laughs> it. It looks justifiable that you should say something. Me, Holy Ghost. It looks just a problem. I got every right to tell them all. But I won't say a word. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. I got every mindset to go say and do something. But, but, but I cannot respond because they want a reaction. I, want a, I cannot react because I got to I got a name to uphold. And guess what? It's not just my name, it's his name. I can't say what I want to say because I got his name. I can't do what I want to do because I got his name on my life. And when you got his name on your life, you can't say what you want to say. You can't do what you want to do. I'm in there. I'm in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Say my name. Say my name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. By his righteous reaction by Paul, he turned and said to the spirit. He did not call the name of the individual who was hosting the party. All right, all right. He did not call the name of the young girl who was housing this spirit of divination. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But he spoke to the spirit. Yeah. Hey. And sometimes when you're in the middle of war, that's why you have to back out so you can re-strategize. Because the enemy knows your emotions are high. And if you say the wrong thing to me, I'm going to say something to you. But when you pull back and say, I must respond, let me observe what's going on. And that I have observed, I, I recognize uh, and I acknowledge uh, that this is a spirit that is not of God, uh, and I must combat it, uh, uh, not from the physical, uh, but I must call that spirit out. Uh, no, hallelujah. Uh, you cannot react uh, to a demonic depression, uh, possessed being. Uh, oh, don't turn me down. Uh, I'm going to work my hand better. Uh, oh, you can not get in a battle with someone enraged with a demonic influence. But you got to pull back and when you recognize what's going on, what's fueling the matter, what's fueling the fight, you get in the midst of it and say, I bind you, Satan. I bind you on 
under the name of Jesus Christ, you're coming out. Hallelujah. I, I see Paul getting here. He said, look here. I, I need to affect change because this demon is coming to plague me. It's coming to distract me. I know I am a man of God, but I got to do the will of my father, the one that has sent me. Because if I'm going to eat, it must be eating on the work of my father. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. But look at here. Paul said, oh, he said this. He said, in, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And it said that same very hour, in other words, quickly, there was no going back and forth. Some of y'all keep on fighting the enemy and you're going back and forth. I don't have to fight the enemy once I recognize it's demonic. Once I understand that you're under demonic influence, I just back up and begin to pray. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. I ain't got to put nobody out unless they get a physical hazard to us and everybody around us. But I can tell you what I can do. I can go into prayer and begin to fight with prayer. I can begin to allow God to show me how to react or respond instead of react. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost done here. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Respond. Right. when her masters Amen. saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them oh, yeah. Glory to God. in front of everybody. Began to attempt to embarrass them, mm -hmm. believing that embarrassment would change their behavior. You have to understand. There's a day when people will grow up and embarrassing them is not good. Right. Embarrassing them. It's periscope. Trying to prove who they are aren't. You will basically embarrass yourself. Yes. Yes. You know, we live in this society in the age where we're trying to expose folk for what they have done and what they're doing. And some uh, some people, I won't we'll say us, but some people will go at great lengths to expose who they want to expose. Yes, yes. And when they go to great lengths to expose whom they want to expose, you realize that some folk don't have nothing to lose. Amen. Amen. When you find a person that has nothing to lose, mm -hmm. they will do what they can to destroy who you are. Yes, they will. But as I speed this up a little bit, they dragged them in front of the people and began to say, these men, being one of us, being Jews, Exceedingly trouble our city. Yeah. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, mm -hmm. to observe and receive. What amazes me is this. Hallelujah. 
You did not hear a peep from them. As long as their money was fine. Amen. Long as it was making money for them. If you want to get a rise out of folk, mess with their money. Amen. Amen. Which is why some of us, if we really want to fight some of these injustices, Yes. Oh, okay, I'm going to switch here yeah. I'm going to get back to this in a moment But, but, but if we want to fight the injustice I challenge you to stop spending in certain sectors Because when you stop spending You get the attention of the government Because you're withdrawing your money My God, amen Amen, amen. amen. Take your money out of Wells Fargo. Take your money out of Citizens. Mm -hmm. Take your money out of uh, Bryn Mawr Trust. Mm -hmm. United Bank. And start putting it in places like United. Watch what happens. Amen. Watch. Pay attention. Yeah. I know people are watching me everywhere. God bless you. Uh -huh. But it's the truth. It, it is. Yeah. It's but when truth. you start spinning and, 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 and understand where your treasure is. <laughs> oh my God. The Bible tells us where your treasure is, there where your heart be also. So you got to watch where you spin because that's showing your heart. And if you really want to show them where your heart is, spin it somewhere else. Amen. 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 That's it. Preach. Call a spade a spade. <laughs> what we see here is your money. <laughs> they drag Paul and Silas and you know we normally talk about midnight and shouting and dancing and the jailer got saved and his whole house got saved and all of those things but when we fast forward into the 17th chapter and the disciples are going on to the next place they're helping this one they're helping that one uh oh trouble arises again Amen. And they said, we must affect change. They kept saying, this Jesus, whom I preach to you, is the Christ. Yes. And let me help you. If you're going to affect change, you must first acknowledge that there is a problem. Yes. 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 That's it. My God. If you cannot acknowledge that there is a problem or you have a problem mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you won't help nobody even yourself but when you acknowledge that there is a problem this is what you do you say I got to make a change but if you don't first acknowledge that there is a problem some of us put on blinders because our problems is with our favorites yes oh, wow. yes oh, amen preach oh, uh -huh. mm. Our problem is, is with that our favorite child. Yes. Uh -huh. Our favorite family. Our mm -hmm. favorite friend. Our favorite brother. Our favorite sister. Our favorite. I'm just glad I got both. I got a brother and a sister. Uh -huh. uh -huh. always my favorite. I know that. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Everybody don't have it like that. Right. That's the God just made it easy for me. Yes, he did. Made it easy for me. Made it easy for me. I'm the only child. But, but some of us play favorites. Yes. And because it, it, it's hitting among our favorites, we put on blinders. Yes. yes. But you must first acknowledge that there is a problem. Amen. Amen. Then if you acknowledge that there is a problem, you now can put your mind to use for a resolution. Yes. Some of us are more part of the problem than the solution. Amen. Amen. We know how to keep stuff going in families. Yes. Y'all know. Yes. Y'all know I'm talking real good. Yes, right I here. do. I know exactly what you're talking about. Some of you can keep stuff going on the job. It, it, it's never you. Amen. Mm -hmm. No, but every department you've been in, the same stuff keep on happening. Amen. The same climate. You know, it was peaceful before you got here. Uh -huh. Now it's chaotic since you've been here. Amen. There's something wrong with that picture. That's 
To affect change, yes. you not only acknowledge the problem, but you come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. And then when you come up with a solution, you put that solution in action. All right. You must have an action plan, but your action don't have to be a reaction, but you can respond. All right. When you affect change, and then when you have done those steps, acknowledge that there is a problem. Come up with the ex uh, 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 solution. And thirdly, when you have gotten to the place that you have executed this plan, now let's stand back, look at everything, and did it work? No, it didn't. Where did I go wrong here? Okay, it didn't work right there. I knew I should have tweaked that. So next time I go through this, I'm going to tweak that. All right. Okay. And then I tweak that. And then I change that. And now the next time I can see that I, I, I need to review, I need to repent and try all over again. And some of us, the enemy keeps having our minds defeated because we think we've been defeated, but you must get back up and start over again. The disciples did not get in a place to effect change by stopping after they were jailed, but they believed in the power of the one they sang to. They believed in the power of the one that they prayed to, and they believed that change would come. Change came in the jailhouse, but it didn't stop there. The change came when they got to the next chapter in the next location. That they said, These people that has come into our city, they have turned our world upside down. We told you the other day that Psalm 24 and 1 the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the world and they that dwell therein, the earth is the site, the world is the system. So when these disciples walk in the city, they looked at them and said, Man, we got to get them out of here. They're messing with our money, they're messing with our fortune telling. There are people that need a prophet, but they don't want to wait. They don't want to live holy to hear the prophet. But they'll pray big money to the fortune teller. They'll pay big money to go in this one and that one. But God gave them a prophet that they did not listen to. I'm here to let you know God is raising up somebody that will take on this world and turn it upside down to the enemy say we got to agree with them because they're making a mess of our money they're making a difference on Capitol Hill they're making a difference in BH1 they're making a difference they're turning ET TV around they're making a difference in Hollywood Hollywood can become Hollywood if somebody can say that God has anointed me to preach the gospel unto every generation unto every nation the Bible the Bible says Matthew 28 and 19 I want you to go therefore into all nations preaching teaching baptizing preach teach baptize and what we say the other night in the early books of Acts that God God told them they were becoming overflowed, overwhelmed, because they needed more people to serve in a disciple. Oh, the disciple said, we cannot leave our places to go serve tables. What are you saying, preacher? That each one of us have a responsibility. 
testimony as being cleaned up and citizens to affect change in the world. That's why we need some anointed lawyers to start running for office. Some say sanctify therapists because somebody need a little couch. Look at your neighbor and say, God can use you right where you are in the hospital room. You might be nursing. You might be taking the blood out. Giving them a new IV. But you can be praying and talking about the God that you serve. Y'all ain't have to be here. You might not say Jesus, but they know it's something about you. When Becky, maybe I shouldn't say Becky, but somebody, Ben, somebody, Charles, walked in my room, and there was a glow. There was something different about this man, about this woman. He was the name that is above every day. There was something. There was a glory. That planet. That room. Somebody holler out of that chain. But I'm done. Affect Make this place where we must affect change. And it's not just going to take me. It's going to take us taking you to affect change. Glory be to God. Because when we realize that God has called us all to go into the world, Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. You notice in Mark 16 and 15, yes, sir. he did not say just the disciples or the preacher. Let me go that right. He didn't just say the preachers with titles going to all the world. Yes. Yes. Come on, sir. He said, go. go, which meant to whoever reads this, and their life has already changed. Because you know that is in there, just you just don't read it. Because how can you help change someone else if you haven't been changed yourself? Amen, amen. My God, yes. if you have not been changed, if you have not been saved yourself, how are you gonna tell somebody else about God? Yes. How are you going to expect your children to love God and worship God and, and, and they don't see you worshiping? Yes. Amen. Come on now. Preach. Never see you praising, never see you do anything. But you are, well, you should go to church. Well, if church, you've been going to church all these years and you've been looking at acting as evil as you have been. Well, I don't need to go to church to act like that. I can act like that without going. Amen. 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 Right. I, I, I really, I really, no, I'm still trying to come. Lady Lewis, I'm really still trying to understand how people say they say and they act and evil. They mean it. Like they never had nothing, nothing nice to say. I don't understand that. I mean, every time they open their mouth, well, you know, did you? You know, I don't know about all of that. I don't know if it takes all of that. Amen. You wouldn't know it because you ain't taken it yet. Amen. Oh. Amen. <laughs> How are you going to say? I don't know if it can take all that if you ain't taken it already. Amen. Amen. That's like you giving a child medicine that's nasty and you saying it tastes good. Well, mm -hmm. But you haven't tasted it yourself. Well, right. 
We can dish it, but we can't take it. That's right. Right. Hey, there you go. That's it. We want grace but don't for us, it. but we send everybody else to hell. Amen. My God, help us. I mean, condemn them. Yes. You're on your way. You're going now. <laughs> but where's the grace? Where's your grace? Amen. Where is your grace? Where is your grace? Lord have mercy. I'm going to stop here. Not finish, but I'm stopping. I'm purposely stopping, intentionally stopping. I'm not done with this. I'll pick it up at another time. The reality is, God has called all of us to change. Yes. Yes. He's called on all of us to effect change. Amen. With every great problem that arose from the Garden of Eden to now, every time God used somebody, He raised them up, He developed them in the dark. When nobody else was watching them. And what happened is God used them to bring reform. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. We talk about Martin Luther King, but we don't even understand Martin Luther. Mm. 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 I'm close here. Mm -hmm. I know some of you are like, I don't have a clue who you're talking about. That's fine. I pray that after this service that you'll be inquisitive enough mm -hmm. to find out God raised somebody up mm -hmm. in the dark ages yes. Yes. to bring reform to the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Because it wasn't well received by others. But they had the thought that the just shall live by faith. Yes. If it wasn't for Martin Luther. We wouldn't have the Protestant church we have today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. With every great problem, God raises up a Moses. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who is God going to use in this time? I ask this question from time. Who's the voice? We don't have a Martin Luther King. We don't have a Malcolm X. Amen. Who's going to stand and bring change. Somebody has to know that God has birthed them for something more than what they say. Yes. And just because your present situation don't look good doesn't matter because God said I can bring you out of that current and bring you to something greater. see yourself and your children and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren those you don't see right now don't even know right now haven't even been conceived if you can see them in a greater place to affect change in this world I dare you to give God praise let's stand Affecting change, affect change. God is raising people up not to be talkers, but those who will be talkers and walkers. Those who will not just hear, but also do. God is raising up, up voices. In whatever area you are in, God can use you. He can use you to be a voice. I'm not telling you to go and laying hands in the hospital. But you can pray while you're hooking up machines within to your God. Amen. To our God. You can't. You, you might not affect what's going on in Capitol Hill 
you might not affect what's going on in Harrisburg, but you can affect what's going on in your local town, your local council. You can show up to the meetings and let your voice be heard. Yes. You can help out at the school, the after school program. You can you can affect change. And, and I say all of this because don't think you got to be a top dog in somewhere big seat, somewhere thinking that's how you affect change. We got to affect change wherever we are. Amen. If you so, you ought to be affecting change in the industry that brings about clothing that will represent God. That he'll be pleased with. If you cut hair, and you're shaping up. It should get somebody's mindset to say, I don't only want to change and look good on the outside, but I need to look on the inside. You've been cutting my hair. How can I be, how can I be better? Because I look good on the outside, but my heart is tore up. My, my character has been assassinated and, 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 and it looks like I'm going through uh, an integral suicide. Yes. You can affect change in somebody's life. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this setting. Lord, as we lift your name up and praise your name, God, there's somebody that wants this change. There's somebody that needs this change. God, not only that we need the change, but after the change is taking place in us, we need to go affect someone else's life, impact someone else's heart, change somebody else's mind. God, Lord, we thank you so much. We're thanking you now because we're going into that place. We're coming to a kingdom of awareness. We're coming to an awareness that you have called us more to, to do more, to do more. Help us as we expand those that are moving even now, those that are working even now to go into different areas, uh, different spheres of influence, different places, different mountains. God, Lord, we're asking you to prepare us, prepare our hearts and minds, give us how to prioritize our schedules. God, that nothing go lacking, that our family not go lacking, that our ministries don't go lacking, and most certainly our relationship don't go lacking with you. God, we don't want to be a people that we be so busy doing your work that we, we, we get too busy for you. Help us. Help us, oh God. Lord, when you call us to different areas and we shy away from us and say, no, Lord, that's not for us. No, that ain't for me to do. Lord, we repent. We ask for forgiveness because you gave us the, the thriving. You gave us the driving. You gave us uh, the thrill. That You gave us the power, the influence to go in those areas. But we, we are scared. We are, we, 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 we're shy. We're pulling back. But God, Lord, we're asking you to strengthen us with boldness. Give us your holy boldness that will cause us to command the spirits to be subject. That will cause the enemy to come and say, I, 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 I need to submit. I, 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 I got to change. And when you call those that are not of, of the church and of you right now, that they'll come and say, I want to change. I, I need to get to this God that you're preaching about, that you're living about, that you're talking about. That Oh, I need that. Help us, oh God. To be change agents. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. That we won't be turn off agents. In the name of Jesus. That we won't be agents that the devil uses. Yes, God. To turn off others from Christ. Others from worship. Others from praise. God, we're thanking you. We glorify you, Jesus. God, as you are strengthening us and ordering our steps, we thank you for ordering our minds and helping us with these things, giving us patience, long-suffering. God, we glorify you. Yes. We honor you today. We honor you with our lips, with our hands, but more importantly, we honor you with our hearts. Yes. God, even as we go forth this day, let us recognize that we, you have put kingdom in us. Yes, Lord. And we must be about your kingdom work. God, we love you today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not just today, we love you. Yes, 
into infinity. You are Alpha and Omega, so we love you. That's God. We love you, God. Bless your name. We thank you for wisdom, your wisdom and comes. God. Your understanding, your wisdom that comes, your peace that comes, your peace that comes and surpasses all understanding. Even when our finite minds don't understand, God give us peace. God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the direction you've given us. We thank you for the instruction you've given us. Help us to abide by what you've spoken, what you what we feel led that you showed us and told us. God, Lord, we thank you for the sight. We thank you for the revelation. As we go forth in your name, you be glorified. God, we're committed to bring pleasure to your heart and fame to your name. God, it's all about you. It's not about us. You be glorified. We honor and praise you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I just want you to repeat with me with your hand lit, risen, rose, upward. Say, Lord, Lord I'm, a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness for you. I'm going to witness. I want my life to witness. I want my heart to witness. I want my testimony to witness to your goodness and how you changed us. God, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We lift our praise to your God.